Hello YouTube and welcome to our new Unity 3D land tutorial. This one's going to be a bit different to what we normally do. A user a while ago requested help on the Android or iPhone mobile device application thing. So what I'm going to do today is basically cover um, implementing it to Unity because you can't just do it straight away. Um, we'll be using the three free ways as I don't have Pro and a lot of people don't have Pro. And then we'll be going over one script just to get you familiar with it. And then I'll let you explore if you need any more help. Just comment and I'll carry on. So, first thing you need to do is to go up to your browser and type in Android SDK for Android. I'm sorry this is just for Android. I don't know. I don't have an iPhone or anything so I can't really help in that area. Um, if you do require some more help, comment and I'll try my best to help you. So, Android SDK, go to the top link and click download the SDK. It's around 600 megabyte. Um, tick you have read it and make sure you do read it because you know everybody does that. And choose what bit you are. If you're not sure, click 32 bit, but if you know you're 64 bit, click 64 bit. It don't matter. And then just click download. 600 meg, it'll download. Once that's downloaded, you'll get this file here. Extract it either with WinRAR 7 zip um, or WinZip, um, zip from Windows, anything you want. And then when you've extracted it, don't ignore the downloads folder. You'll get these three files here. Eclipse, SDK and SDK Manager. What an SDK is, is a system development kit. Well, I think it begins with system. But yeah, basically it gives you all the tools you need to start developing in a certain operating system. So in this case it's for Android. I know you can get um, Java SDKs to code in Java. C++ SDKs, you get loads of them. So what you need to do is first double click SDK Manager. It'll pop up with a black box, then shut off, and then give it a minute, then it'll pop up with another box in a minute. So, when it loads, there's the box, so we've got it. And as you can see, a lot of mine have already been installed, and the reason I've already installed it and not going through it is because it takes a long time. But, um, so what you need to do is if you close all these down, just so you can see, you have quite a few boxes to choose from, so don't worry, I'll guide you through it. The first thing you want to do is make sure you tick tools. You need the platform tools and build tools. You really need them else this won't work. The next thing you need is the Android package for your version. Now if you don't know this, don't worry, just click all the fours. That's what I did. And every device I've tried it on works fine. Um, they should support gingerbread and jelly bean and all the newest ones if you don't know what they are just don't worry just tick the top four if it doesn't work tick some more down if it doesn't work keep ticking if it doesn't work you can't use it simple so the next thing is to go to extras and you need to look down these make sure you get the google usb driver you really really need that and that's all you need from there you can tick web driver if you like but i haven't so make sure you've got usb driver android version and all the tools then you click install, um, choose accept license and click install. It'll install all them for you, but I've already done it so I don't need to. And when it's done it'll pop up with your box saying um, you have just successfully installed updates. It is recommended that you close this box and turn it on again. You don't need to do that, just cross it off. It works fine. So the next thing you need to do is grab your phone. You must have your phone. Now a little box will pop up in a minute and you'll be able to see me on my phone. So boom so here we are you have my phone here sorry about the qu cam quality I don't have a recorder for my phone I didn't even know you could get one but never mind what you need to do on Android is go to the app market and as you can see I need a pen uh, where's my screwdriver that one? here you need to go to the unity remote type Android market and type in unity remote it should be the top one click install and you'll get this app here so what you want to do is plug your phone in via the USB to your cable to your computer and if it's the first time you're doing it just let your computer install itself it'll tell you what to do so when it's done you need to drag your top bar down and you'll get this message that says USB connected select to copy files from your computer so click that and it'll pop up with that and click connect to storage PC and OK. If it doesn't pop up with that, reboot your computer. If it still doesn't, go and install Samsung Keys. And then it'll work. So that's the phone part done. So I'm going to jump back to the computer now. 
Um, boop. So we're back, and you can see we have this box popped up here. It says it's saying you can now transfer files. We don't want that yet, so press it off. Then what you want to do is go to Edit in Unity and choose Preferences. And in External Tools, you'll see in one for Android SDK Location. If you click that, a box will pop up and you'll be able to guide your pro your Android to wherever it was. So you need to find that SDK folder, what you had. Now I already know it's in Program Files and Android SDK, because that's where I put it. Then don't put it here. Double click into the SDK folder and then click select. So make sure you see these add-ons, build tools, docs, extras, platforms, stuff like that. Click select folder. It'll allow it. If you don't click in the right place, it'll say it doesn't exist. Just cross it off, do the same again. Um, I don't I can't really think of any errors what will happen there. The next thing we have to do is jump back to our phone. So, boop. So on our phone, what you need to do is while that's still connected, you need to press your home button or go back to your desktop and click the app, that's my apps, and if you find the remote what you've just installed, if you click it, you'll get this app, this app pop up and it, all it is is the Unity logo saying connect to this, connect this device to USB cable to your computer to play game. I can't really see it on my phone because they've not stretched it properly, but yeah. So next thing what you want to do is just click play on your computer, that's all you have to do, click play. And as you can see, it's now completely transmitting whatever I see. You should see both of these now if I do some fancy effects. Um, you should see that I've got my Unity here, and then I've also got my Unity game here. So I hope you can see that. If I just put that there, you should be able to see it better. Yep, so you can see it. So if I move around on the computer, you can see it slowly moves around on the device. It is really bad quality on the device purely because um, one I'm recording so it's taking more power to do it but the second thing is um, it's transmitting all this data through USB so every single pixel so it's like oh this is so hard to do but you can see it if I wasn't recording now you'd see that it was actually better quality it seems to have froze Yep, it seems to have froze. But it does work when I'm not recording. If you don't believe me, try it yourself. You can even start it and stop it again. But this does work. So, now that we can see it, can you play it? Well, you can, but we need to develop our own scripts for it. So if we go into this maze game and press E, you'll see that it pops up with this screen. If I try to click the play button with my finger, you'll see that it works. But if you look at the computer side or the the camera side you'll see that we don't have any character there that's because something's gone wrong with our camera but it's easy to fix so what we're going to do is go into our um, what you call it uh, maze mini game and we'll go to the level 01 and if you double click your main camera um, you should see that um, the orthographic view is really 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 small like you can't see what you need to see so all I'm going to do is just stretch it outwards until you can see everything like so so now you can see it we'll save it load up our level 1 again and click play so as you can see it's loaded so if we click the play game on it if, I, if you get it right drag with your finger because it does work so as you can see now it's working and I'm dragging it with my finger it's slow just because I'm recording and it's sending data through and everything but we'll drag it across to the green and you'll see that it works and you saw the mouse it was stable so that works really really well so what we're going to do is go to level 1 and we're going to make a little script for it at first just to make it look really really good so what we're going to do is I'm going to pause recording on this for now on the phone so you can't see it and we're going to create a new script in scripts and then we'll put it in weapons can we mm, yeah go on then and we'll make a new folder called mobile and in here we'll type in mobile fire so I don't plan to do any more tutorials on this mobile but if you really want me to comment below and I will so we're going to open this up and we're going to learn a couple of new codes 
So, I've done it big for once. But while we're here, we're also going to open up our player fire script. Simply because we can copy and paste things from it. Really easy. So, first thing we're going to do is create a bullet prefab. So, there, we'll go there. Just so we've got something to throw our bullet in. So, what's the next thing for bulletin? Well, we need a click event. Now, the basic click event for um, mobile devices with, for Android is if we just type in print, it's input dot touch with a lowercase t count. And what input dot touch count is, is whenever input is when we put something into the computer or the device and touch count is how many times we're touching it so if you've got a device that can multi touch like most of phones can now touch count will go beyond one otherwise it'll stay at zero so if we just test this by going uh, turn the phone back on and go to play if you look at the bottom of the console on the PC version when it loads you'll see that it's not printing anything because we've not assigned it so let's assign it quickly to our character. So we'll just assign it to misc scripts for now. Uh, mobile. So we'll try again. And you'll see that it'll print a huge amount block of zeros. Zero, zero, zero. That means we're not touching it. But if I were to go on and touch it, you'll see it change to one. There. And if I press it again with another finger, you'll see two. And then it'll go back to one because I've let go, obviously. So if we click one. Well, it's crashed at the moment. But if it didn't crash, you'd see it worked fine. It is generally crashing because of the recorder. Please believe me on that one. But what we're going to do now is go back to... Just pause that again. Our script. And so touch count is every time you press it, it increases. So for every touch we press, we want it to fire, don't we? So if we go down here and type 4, var i equals 0, just a basic for loop, i is less than input dot touch count so basically that one saying is create a variable called i and i is never going to be higher than the amount of times we've pressed it and yes this does have to be in the function update else it won't um, detect when you're pressing it don't worry though this won't take up that much because if it's calling zero the for loop's never going to activate if it equals zero it's less than zero it's just going to skip 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 because it's maximum but if it equals one it'll call one then turn off for every time you've clicked it. But if it equals 1 again, it won't do it, which we'll code in a minute. So you press I++ plus plus just like normal. So, what's that thing we want to do? Well, we want to fire it. Okay, so let's spawn our bullet prefab and add force to it. That one, and we'll put it there. Perfect. We've got everything we need. It spawns, it spawns at the right position, it moves it forward. Let's see what happens. And you can look at the phone or the thingy one if you like, but you'll see that if we press it, it rapidly fires. Hugely. Boom, 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 boom. And then the device crashes, obviously. This was much better on my tablet, but I can't record it the other way. But yeah, so it spawn fires really, really fast, so how can we stop that? Well, the easiest way to stop it would be to create something which is called a phase. Now, a phase is like an order of operation. So, if you think about it for your mouse, when we've done that before, you have your standard mouse, which is nothing. You haven't pressed any button, it's n you haven't released any button, it's just nothing. So, that's our zero on touch count. So, if we were to press one mouse button down, the touch count would be one. But as we press it down, that's begin for the phase on a input device so um, a phone an iPhone you press it that's begin so you're beginning a phase so we're going to work with that one the others are move so you can click and as long as you move your finger it'll perform the action that is well I'll tell you when we get there there's also end I think it's end when you let go and there's a couple more you use so in this for loop we're going to type if input dot get and then here is the new one it's called touch in bracket with brackets so input.getTouch basically means when you press it um, it receives the touch you yes you've pressed it so we, we've got to specify which touch out of the touch counts we want it to record so basically if we left it at zero it wouldn't ever ever fire because zero zero it just would like you're not 
input in anything. But if we left it at 1, it would work, but because it constantly flickers between 0 and 1 every time we press it, it throws an error, which is kind of weird. So what you want to do is set this to your for loop, i. And what this will do is for every time you press it, it'll get receive a touch. But we're not done yet. After input dot get touch, you want to type dot phase, which I explained earlier is a stage of operation. And then you put equals. So basically, if the input dot touch you've pressed equals the order of our phase. So, um, like I said earlier, it began, end, moved. We put touch phase. I can't remember the capitals on that one. But basically, it means if it equals a touch phase dot, and then we put our touch phase we want, so began. Um, it would make more sense to be begin, so the touch phase begins. But in this case, it's, um, the touch phase has begun. Or begun. Yeah. So you make sure you put that, and then if you put all the brackets in correct places, da, 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 you will see that if the input what well, is received for any multi-touch we put on, and that's input phase equals touch phase dot began. So pressed it, it's begun. That's our mouse down. If we release it, that's mouse up. Um, you've got. Um, moved which is just like that that means if you press it it doesn't do anything but if you move your finger it'll carry on so let's hope that works with the capitals and everything hope it seems to like it so what we're gonna do is click play and start recording again and you'll see that if we press it we can still fire on PC but if we press it on the phone you'll see that it'll fire one by one just like that so it is firing so that's all I'm going to do for it. Um, remember to look at the move. I've put a couple of documents down below which basically covers more about the input sign of it. Um, there's a lot of tutorials on the internet, but if you are programming from Android, you will see a lot of them are for iPhone, but you can just tweak the words. It works the same. So thank you for watching. I really, really hope you liked it. And stop recording and see you next time.